Hello Gene and hello Internet! Welcome to Kerbal Space Program! You will recognise this place as, I don't know, Mission Control, I suppose? Where we are looking through the contracts that we are going to play today. Um, it is literally going to be Minmus. It's time to go to that beautifully minty ball, ball of rock. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to do, whether we're going to be spamming all the biomes or stuff like that. Well, this is why we're here. This is why we have started in the Mission Control Room, because I want to get all these Minmus stuff, like this one here. We'll do some orbital so uh, orbital stuff. We've got Mystery Goo Material Study Magnometer. Mag mag magnetometer. Yes, I've got to struggle with that word again all day. Um, so we're going to take that one. Woo, what else have we got? Over the moon? No, no. Uh, build, build a base on the moon. We're, we're going to do this at some point. Um, possibly after we send off our first intergalactic... No, interplanetary flight. Intergalactic flight. That, that would be good. Uh, what else have we got? Build a new planetary base on Minmus. Hmm... I'm not sure if I want to do the base on Mimus yet. This is going to be my first flight, so that, that might be a bit much. Um, to be fair, I think we may actually already have what we want, just that, that active one here. Um, and I'm, I, I'm hoping that once we've got this done, we're going to have the ability to get more contracts for surface science of Minmus. That is my plan. I'm going to set... Yeah, I, let's, let's get out of here. Welcome to the VAB, because this is a place that needs an introduction, really. Um, I've been working on a ship, Raspberry Mint Crunch, with the superpowers of Raspberry and Mint Crunch. Now, you'll see I've made a bit of a weird ship here. Uh, I've basically followed the the angle of this uh, command pod at the top here, put some... some um, supportive structure in and then made sure that we have the uh the science to be able to do four separate biomes uh and by four separate biomes this also includes high and low altitude because that's what our contract here is orbit around minmus goo 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 um i'm thinking as well as this we're gonna send a an, an orbit uh, an orbiter up sorry uh, an mro the minmus reconnaissance orbiter uh, which I will strap to the, in between this and the launcher. The launcher I've not made yet. The orbiter I've not made yet. So, I will see you in a couple of minutes with a whole load of stuff underneath this and maybe on the launch pad. Who knows? And with nary a word of explanation, off we go on our epic journey to go to Minmus, that tiny minty ball out at the furthest regions of the Kerbal system. Uh, I, I think we've got enough rocks going around Kerbal to call it a Kerbal system, right? Uh, so you notice straight away that Bob is in charge. Uh, I thought it was about time he got out to uh, show what he's made of because, you know, Jeb's been doing everything up till this point and that's a little bit unfair. We, 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 we like to see other people doing stuff. We're not, of course, forgetting Camp Top. Camp Top will be coming out to show his stuff in the future. But let's talk about what's going on here. So the first thing you'll notice is that I do not have an orbiter on there. Um... I was running through the engineering, uh, the Kerbal Engineer plug-in thing, um, and I was noticing the numbers were very close. Um, so I decided to go without an orbiter. Still, the numbers are very close. Like, I've got literally 5k delta V to, to, to get into um, orbit. That's the word I was looking for. Which should be 500 meters per second delta V over what I need. But the thing that I've forgotten about here is this is me flying this and I am not exactly the master of um, uh, efficient trajectories you'll see here I am down to my last stage of my lifter and I'm still at 40 kilometers uh, and looking at the top left you can see my Apple apps is 46 kilometers it's not good enough I can say it's not good enough right now so basically already I'm, I'm, I'm checking out my apple apps i'm looking around I'm like mm, it's not really going to work so let's think about where we're going to ditch um at the same time i was also like well maybe maybe if we just keep pushing in this direction with everything we've got we can get him up to orbit and then have a little bit more time to think about what we're going to do that was at least my plan the thing is this stage that we're now on now is not meant for fighting a, a serious gravity well let alone any sort of atmospheric effects uh it is literally just for taking us from Kerbin to minmus which doesn't take all that much delta v and it doesn't and it definitely doesn't leave me with enough to get uh, to counteract this minus 400 and something and change meters of uh periaps uh 
So all we're going to have to do is try and ride this thing down. Uh, keep keep an eye on all my my fuel levels because you know we do want to make a, a a nice safe easy splashdown. Well, as it is, it's going to be a splashdown. But there are several issues at this point, and I I think as we get closer, we're going to start start talking about what they are. So at this point, I'm like, okay, I'm not obviously not going to make it out let's uh kill my sas and swing ourselves around now i like to slow us down and take us through so the first thing i notice is that my parachutes are right at the top of my stage stack and i'm like oh no all right let's put throttle up as fast as i can and that's not good enough so i'm hitting my space bar and it's all over i think it's appropriate to take a moment's silence here to remember the adventures of bob the bravest kerbinaut Anyway, just like some of the larger and more reputable space agencies out there, we can't spend all our time mourning over our, our losses. Uh, we will make the fourth day of every year uh, the official mourning our dead uh, day. I, I don't know if there's an official way of saying that. Uh, but yeah, Bob Kerman made it through four, four glorious days. Uh, and we will remember him for his sacrifice. So let's talk ship redesign. Literally, the only thing I did was swap my four science struts. You know, I'd, I'd put a whole load of stuff on a strut, uh, on a, a structural strut. Um, instead of four of those, we've got three. And this this seems to be it. I, I was just being a little bit too too greedy. We've, we've now repurposed this ship to only fulfill the contract that it was built to fulfill and none of this other stuff. Uh, you'll also notice that I'm taking a much steeper trajectory this time. I mean, we're at 50 kilometers or so. Well, I'm at 40 and my, pa uh, my Apple Apps is at 60 and we're only just starting to lean over. Uh, this is the result of, uh, I'll be honest, a couple of test flights in Sandbox just to find out what the best, uh, the best attack trajectory for this was. And it turns out it was pretty much straight up until you break the atmosphere and then start going sideways. Uh, it wasn't really so much when I break the atmosphere, it was when I swapped to the middle stage because there's not quite as much um, weight going on there. But as my Apple Apsis had already broken 100 kilometers, I thought it was about time to lean over on here. I obviously had taken a, a slightly more efficient route than I was expecting. I was expecting to literally just like pop out the top of the atmosphere when I had done this bit of staging right here. And now we are balancing uh, up and down. If you watch, my, watch the vertical speed indicator at the top there. Um, so we're balancing that up and down to just kind of like fly at the top of our periapsis, uh, apoapsis, sorry, and bring our periaps up as high as possible into a nice circular burn, whilst at the same time watching those external fuel tanks that I wanted to throw away and get rid of at the right time. Um, so looking at my orbit, it was almost um, fate that I had to go to, to Mimus, as both Mimus's position, my um, inclination node, and my ship position were all meeting up at the exact same spot I, I barely even had to do any correctional burns um uh, on the, the trajectory in fact as you'll see i didn't have to do any at all um a, a quick whip around the orbit making heavy use of the Kerber alarm clock here because obviously you've you've watched me a lot i i i i I have this tendency to just go ripping past my maneuver node. And you also notice another little tactic that I picked up here with the um, expanded mav ball. I have the, the little scale slider here. So when I'm doing things that are quite as uh, high precision as this, I like to expand my nav ball up as big as possible and make sure I'm like looking dead at my maneuver node here. Um, so another quick um, alarm set to, to tell me when the SOI change is going to happen because we don't want to go breezing through that too quickly else all our uh, all our carefully laid lay plans can be messed up in the space of a single frame which is a little bit awkward um, and right now I'm just looking for Minmus I'm like where is it I don't know where it is I keep looking around and keep looking around I even go through the SOI change and um, it, uh, we'll wait for this to just catch up a little bit here. Oh, performing a, a, a nice little maneuver node there. That, that's just kind of perfect, you know. It was all lined up brilliantly. Uh, and then we just carry on having a look. I'm like, well, where is it? What's going on? So I end up pointing my, my rocket engine at it, and I was like, oh, there it is. And during this time of setting maneuvers and making sure we're landing on the, the light side of Minmus, I, I do try to make sure that I, uh, I do that. Uh, we'll talk about pilots. You notice the Jebs in the cockpit, and this is a little bit, um, little bit miffing to me. 
as I had in fact um, assigned Cam Top, was his name Cam Top? Yeah, Cam Top to the uh, to the mission, and then when I launched it, there was Jeb. Um, very, very, very confusing. Anyway, here we are doing some uh, high altitude science. Uh, this is all part of the contract that we are here to perform, and I think, well, whilst we're here, like all sorts of things can go wrong. It's probably a good idea to get out and collect all the science that is uh, in the in the bays back here. Uh, mainly because I'm a little bit worried about hitting the floor hard and taking out everything apart from my command pod. And, you know, the science is the important bit here. It's very much the important bit here. Okay, so I'm bringing my, my ship round to this manoeuvre nude over here. Mainly so... Oh, well, well so we can watch... Uh, Minmus eclipsed the sun to begin with, but also th so we can bring our periaps down as low as possible on the on the daylight side So that we can have a nice uh, easy landing zone For Jeb and this brand new never once before landed ship That's a, that's a little bit annoying that this has never landed before. you would have thought with at least one test flight <laughs> and a fatality It would have had a, a bit more of a, a, a track record and indeed it's, it's a little bit a little bit confusing that with such a high fatality record on this ship we are uh, putting out the star of our space program in it but you know that just shows that how much of a how much Jeb really uh, values publicity over his own life it's a, it's a little bit weird I mean we'd have to question the morals and even the motives of a man who will take such risks just to make sure he is more famous than all his other uh, Astronauts, Kerbinauts, space astronauts. I don't know what we're going to call them here, but yeah. So at this point, my trajectory is set up to completely smash into this mountain over here, and I think, ah, maybe this is a time, a good time to uh, completely nullify all my forward velocity and drop our interplanetary stage. Now, the main th re uh, the main purpose this is so is providing is to show us where the floor is. It's going to blow up, and then I'm going to fire my engines. That was the plan. I didn't quite stick to it. I, I, I did lose my nerve a little bit just there, you'll note. Uh, the, the rocks were getting rather la large. But with that little bit of information in hand, we can just very gently touch down. One of the best landings I've ever done. Like touch down at 1.5 meters per second with, a, with just a beautifully smooth deceleration gradient all the way down to the floor. I, I thought that was, that was lovely. Uh, now it'd be time for all the science in. It is indeed why we are here. We need as much science as we can to unlock the tech tree. Um, also just to fulfill the contracts, right? This, this is what we're here for. Um, and get the surface sample. The surface sample is indeed like my number one priority whenever I come out to Minmus. I mean, it is like three times more science than anything other than the materials bay will give you. And the flag is not made of ice cream. Because I'm, I'm a little bit gutted that it's not made of ice cream. Uh, a small moment to get a, a screenshot there because, you know, we need a Kerbal on, with a flag next to him to signify that we didn't kill everyone in this episode. Uh, and then I thought it was maybe time to go and play with a rock because, you know, I don't really play with these rocks and, and they look very interesting to me. Um, I immediately find out that I can't actually walk up it, which is annoying. I kind of wanted to sit on top of it. Uh, it's not the first time that I've done this, but it's the first time during this this update, and I was kind of hoping that the, the ground scatter would actually have some substance to it. Uh, but no, that's not going to happen. Right, now Jeb is going to go around and collect all the science here, and uh, that that's a wee bit annoying, uh, or rather a wee bit boring to watch. Um, but what is not boring is moving these uh, parachutes up to the top. So during testing, I had discovered that the parachutes down the bottom here lead very much to my ship turning over when, when we deploy them. Uh, obviously, I, I should have known this. If you put parachutes at the bottom of your ship and they all open up, the bottom of the ship's going to be pulled up because that's where the most parachutes are. You know, it's all about, like, points of force and stuff. I, I know this. this. This is, like, basic Kerbal stuff. So you just watched me double check all my sciences to make sure that I'd got everything that I needed to get. And then I looked out to my map view to see which way was home, or rather which way is retrograde to Minman's orbit. And it turns out east is this time, so we're going to go east and then just keep pushing in this direction. Uh, it is very close to the, the exact direction we want to go, and we just do a, a little bit of little bit of plane changing to make sure we're, we're coming down on an equatorial 
position because you know that that's that's where the Kerbal Space Pro uh, Space Center is, and that is where we're trying going to try and end up. Uh, I I didn't do it perfectly, uh, and it's about here that I'm like, uh, you know what? We're just going to wait until we leave uh, the Minman sphere of influence, so that all the markers actually make sense relative to Kerbin rather than relative to Minman. And so here we are in in the interplanetary space. It's not really inter interplanetary space in in the the Kerbin systems space into body space i know and we're looking down at our periaps here now looking at kerbin we can see that the space center is just just around the corner there on the left hand side which means i want to take just over a day getting down or just you know just over some multiple of a day getting down there so that kerbin has time uh, that the space center has time to turn around unfortunately i seem to have taken just a little bit too long I, i'm not sure what went wrong there i thought i'd taken just an hour longer but the that gave Kerb the, the Kerbal Space Center enough time to completely spin round to the other side of the planet, which to me seems like half a day too late. Um, I'll, you know, I'm just trying to work out the timings for this. But, uh, you know, we are landing in the ocean between the desert and the peninsula that the Kerbal Space Center is, is uh, situated on. I think that's pretty good, pretty good landing from like all the way out at Minmus orbit. I mean, it might not be the uh, precision that the Curiosity team had, like all the way out to, to I was going to say Juno there, to Mars with that sort of precision. But, you know, this, this is pretty damn good. I'm impressed. If I put myself into a stable orbit rather than just coming straight for the floor, uh, I probably could have done better. But anyway, there we go. I'm just going to recover because we've already got the, uh, the water science. And there is a whopping 786 science taken in. Uh, it blew me away, actually, at that point. I was like, wow. Okay, cool. Leaving me to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure. I will see you next time where I think we're going to put a station in low Kerbin or low Kerbin orbit. But yeah, we'll see. Bye.